Well, I do, I've got a crack in this optimizer block right under the bolt of the number two passenger side main here. Okay, so now again, the goal is to get the pistons out. So we need to take the rod caps off and uh, we'll be able to see the rod bearing size so we can get the rod bearings and get the piston size so we can get all new pistons. Fifteen millimeter. Well, I do, I've got a crack in this optimizer block right under the bolt of the number two passenger side main here. I don't know if I can get a shot, but let's, let's see what we can do here. I've got some pictures, um, so go to the article and read the full article. There you go. Yeah. Yep, right, right there. Directly underneath the bolt. So there you go, cracked optimizer. I'm gonna keep running it, of course. At this point, I don't have any, really any choice. I'm not too worried about it. I know uh, it's not just a singular case. Guys have just put them back together and run them cracked, and they've lasted for a quite a considerable long time. So it's not a uh, end of the world at this point. It's a little more disappointing when you get into a project. And you're always going to find more than you expect. But so far, I've found, well, I guess it could be worse. So far, I haven't seen a cracked cylinder. That was the biggest thing I was worried about. Okay, let's get these things off here. Take off the ones that I can get to here, and then I'll spin the crank and get the others. Now you'll want to keep caps with the rods and the pistons. You'll want to know what cylinder they were in and which orientation the caps with the rods and also the rods which way they go on. You want to keep them all that basically go in where they went and exactly the orientation they were in. And they're just numbered one through eight as you go back. Good, holy cow. Some wear, but no brass is showing.
So as you're looking at the cap, see that little tang sticking out there? That points forward. The next one points that way. So that would be two, three towards the front, four towards the back, and they just alternate. happy with the bearings. It'll wear on this one. It'll be the front. It's the front of the motor. Standard size bearing. The backs of the bearings. You can see it says STD right there. It's not uh, what a lot of you guys think. I mean standard. The pistons as far as orientation is pretty easy. The injectors will shoot right down towards that area there. So you just want these to be pointing up. And the last little piece of the puzzle as far as orientation on the rods, you should have that number. You have one on the cap, and uh, and then on the pit, on the rod itself. Make sure they're both lined up or on the same side. So you have that. Then you have the tang, so that goes towards the front of the motor. And then you have the uh, I can't remember what the name of this is called. Um, there's a technical name for it, but anyway, come on, focus. There we go. And then you want that pointed up, so that'll get you oriented correctly. So uh, on these, this is a GM piston. Um, I don't know if this is standard for all GM or not, but these are not easy. Instead of having snap rings, they just have uh, the circular. It's a snap ring, but it's just a circular wire. And what a pain in the ass. So I've got a small jeweler screwdriver and they do put a little slot down in there. And you know what, there's probably some special technique and uh, an actual professional could get these right out of here, but uh, here's how I did it. I just used that, had the end of the wire just overlapping the slot. I got the jeweler screwdriver down in there to, to pull it up out of the groove. And then I've got the uh, small standard screwdriver holding the jeweler screwdriver. And then I've got this the small screwdriver in there and uh, get it. Of course it had to pop out right just then. out with the jeweler screwdriver and then just slide your standard screwdriver underneath there and just whoop and uh, work it along there so now see the end is popped up so it should stay out and just swing her on around and she goes flying <laughs> I was hoping that pin would slide right out of there, but oh yeah, she's going. She just pushes right out of there. You don't have to get it all the way out. You just need to get it past the point of the rod there. And uh, if this doesn't work, then get a just a uh, large spark plug socket and uh, slide it right in there and use a hammer to bang it out. Get another large socket on the inside or just 
prop it up so that there's room for the pin to fall out, but it's pretty easy. Okay, see, and then the rod just comes right out of there. So as far as the orientation on the piston, this is uh, where the injector shoots into. So you want that pointed down. So this is the number one piston. So it'll be over here. This will be put in down. You have your tangs pointed forward and you have your numbers. Which side are they on? Oh, right there. You've got both the numbers oriented so the numbers on the cap and the numbers on the rod are on the same side so as long as those are together your tangs are forward your uh, valve pockets and uh, the injector pocket there injector spray pocket that's not the proper term i can't think what it is right now but anyway that's pointed down and that's the orientation for all of your uh, pistons so then as long as you know what hole they go into then everything should be fine now, let's take a look at this piston. What I was most interested in here is the fact that all my pistons, pretty just about, I, can, I haven't looked at them in detail, but looks like pretty much all my pistons are cracked. As you can see there pretty well. I was wondering if you could see it evident through, and I cannot. My understanding is the thinnest part of the dome of the piston cross section is almost a half inch and it's dished as you can see on the inside so it's much thicker out here on the ring landings but yeah I can't really see any obvious cracks There you go. <laughs> so I was hoping there would be some markings on here. Though I do have some uh, casting marks. I was hoping that there would be as clear a sign as a bearing as far in regards to the size. So I'll have to do some research on here because I don't see anything that uh, the numbers make obvious anyway. So I can uh, order my pistons in the same size. It's going to be uh, 10, 20, 30, 40 over 0 0.040030. I don't know if it, it might go higher, but I don't see any numbers in regards to any number of thousands over. That's probably a part number I'll have to check out. Maybe that'll give me some info. Uh, regardless, I'll just uh, end up, I'll, I'll be measuring them also and comparing it against the uh, standard size pistons.